Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Note Forge. So last time I put the finishing touches on this rhino ring that I made in Blender, and now it's time to print and cast the final piece. And to do that, I'm going to be testing out some new resin that was kindly sent to me by some nice folks over at Jim He. And this is their High Wax Plus castable resin, which is advertised as having 60% wax in the resin for smooth casting performance. And just a quick disclaimer, they did send me this resin for free, as well as an affiliate link if you guys want to help out the channel. But they didn't ask me to say anything nice about the resin or anything like that. So all the opinions in this video are entirely my own. So it does come with some basic user information on the back of the bottle. And because of the high wax content, it recommends a printing temperature of around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. And because it's a little cold in my office right now, I'm going to go ahead and heat up this resin in a bowl with some warm tap water and just leave that to sit for about five minutes before giving it a good shake to mix up the resin and then pouring it into the vat. And the first thing that I noticed when opening the bottle is that this resin doesn't really have a strong odor to it, which is really nice. And it also kind of has a dark matte green color to it, which I think will help with seeing some of those detail in the prints later on. And for the printer settings, they do provide some recommended instructions for this resin that serve as kind of a good starting off point, but I couldn't find any specific settings for my Frozen Sonic Mini. And in their guide, they show that they test with an Elegu Mars 3. So just know that you may have to do some tweaks or adjustments for your specific machine. So the prints came off the build plate pretty easily and they cleaned up really nicely with some simple isopropyl alcohol as well. To make the cleanup a little quicker and easier, uh, I like to put my prints in a Ziploc bag with some IPA in it. And then I just put that whole bag in an ultrasonic cleaner with water. I like to do my cleanups this way just because it uses a lot less IPA and it's also not contaminating my ultrasonic vet every single time. So here's the ring print right after a little bit of cleanup. And overall, I'm really happy with how this is looking. Uh, it has some really nice detail, even with that larger layer height of 0.05 millimeters. And the only thing that I noticed is that it does have a few small holes and imperfections on the horn of the rhino and over by the band of the ring. Uh, I'm not too sure what's causing that. It's possible it could be from debris in the vat or maybe even small air bubbles in the resin. After doing some research, I found that I could probably improve this by just changing some of the settings in the slicer software. So I'll have to do a few more tests to kind of figure that out. But either way, I still think this print should be usable for casting. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing some of these supports. And one thing that I really like so far about this resin is that it seems to have a good amount of flex to it. Some resins come out kind of plasticky and super rigid, which can make removing supports kind of difficult because those areas can kind of break off and end up damaging the print. So some good flexibility will definitely help with some of those smaller supports especially here on the inside of the ring. And this resin, at least before curing, is also soft enough to where it can be easily cut with an X-Acto knife, uh, which is nice for these hard to reach spots where some snips kind of wouldn't fit. So after a bit more cleanup, now you can see that rhino relief that was sculpted on the inside of the ring and that's looking pretty cool. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more cleanup with a micro motor and some rounded burrs. 
and I'm just going to smooth out any of these marks that were left over from the supports. And also an important thing to note, I am using a respirator along with some good air filtration in the room. Uh, this resin dust is something that you definitely don't want to breathe in. So the instructions for this resin suggest that you submerge the prints in water during the UV curing. And I'm not too sure why that is. Uh, because those prints are still technically exposed to oxygen when it's just in water. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, because that's what it suggests. And thankfully the prints are dense enough to kind of sink, unlike that purple psoriatic resin that I've used in the past. So now I'm just going to cure them under UV light for about a minute. And after the prints are cured, they definitely feel a lot more rigid than they did before. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in some of these small holes with some wax and then sand the surfaces down to make them nice and smooth. So now I'm just going to go ahead and sprue this ring up. And because this design has so much mass at the head of the ring, uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach a sprue directly to the back of the head of the rhino. And this will hopefully prevent any kind of shrinkage from happening in that area. And another nice thing that I noticed about this resin is that wax seems to stick to it really well which might be due to the high wax content in the resin, but either way it's really nice to not have to worry about that wax detaching from the print. So I'm also attaching this to the sprue base kind of at an angle. That carved out section underneath the ring is very cup shaped, so a lot of air could possibly get trapped underneath it. So doing it at an angle will hopefully prevent that. And for the investment, it would probably be better to use something like PlastiCast, which is better suited for like resin printed casting. Um, but I don't have any at the moment. So I'm gonna try to get away with using some regular SC20 investment by r and And I'm gonna add 1% boric acid uh, just to give it some strength. And my hope is that these prints are wax-like enough to where that resin can just kind of melt out of the mold and hopefully not expand too much during the burnout. So I did an eight hour burnout cycle in the kiln, ramping up to 1350 degrees Fahrenheit and just holding that for a few hours before bringing that down to a thousand degrees for casting. And that's probably a little too high for this size of ring um, but it is currently freezing outside, so I figured I would lose a little bit of heat kind of faster than normal. And after a little cleanup, here is the raw browns casting. And I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. There's a lot of detail in the skin texture that came out really nice. So there is a small defect on the nose that looks like it didn't fill in all the way. And to me that looks like a small piece of investment or something that kind of fell down into the mold. And there's also a small defect on the ear from a bubble that was in the investment that got stuck to the print, but that should clean up pretty easily. And the relief sculpt on the inside of the ring looks like it came out really nicely too. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and saw off these sprues and start finishing up the ring.
And finally, here is the finished ring. I'm super happy with how this ring turned out and I think it's definitely one of my favorite designs that I've done so far. That detail with a dark finish just really makes all those small skin textures pop. And it also just feels really cool in the hand. Uh, actually, it kind of feels like it would make a good topper for like brass knuckles or something, but that'll have to be for another project. So for my final thoughts on this resin, I'm actually very impressed with how this resin performs. Um, these are some of the cleanest castings that I've been able to get with a castable resin. And after some tweaking on my printer settings, I was even able to fix those problems of getting these small holes in my print by just changing the layer height to 0.03 millimeters. And if you're interested in trying this resin for yourself, they also gave me a coupon code to share with you guys. So be sure to check that out down in the video description. I'm definitely going to be using this resin for some future projects, but until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.